some of you guys know, I've needed a table saw for quite some time. The more I shopped, the more I realized the right tool needed to be a solidly built machine with a cast iron top, great dust collection, straightforward assembly, and allow me the ability to add on an upgrade if I needed. I originally started out looking at contractor saws. I quickly upgraded to hybrids, and then I finally came to the conclusion that what I really wanted and needed was a quality cabinet saw. So after months of research, watching videos, reading reviews, and contemplating the costs over and over again, I finally made a decision, and eventually a purchase. And this is what I came up with. I love your new saw. What's going on guys? I'm Jody. This is Inspire Woodcraft and this is the latest addition to the shop. This is the SawStop PCS 175. It is a one and three quarter horse, 10 inch, legit cabinet saw. And I am so stoked to have this in the shop. Now for those that don't know, my old saw is the rigid R4513. It's a 10 inch foldable contractor style saw. You can kind of wheel it around the shop, fold it up and get it out of your way. And that saw I've had for about four years and it worked pretty good for about the first two and a half to three years. But in the last year, it's developed a huge dip in the middle of it, both going this direction and this direction. And it doesn't go all the way to the front and back edges, which means it's impossible to get this blade to 90 degrees. And it's also impossible to get a decent cut on anything that's under about say eight inches or so, because as material enters the saw to make the cut, it actually dips down towards the blade and then comes back out flat again upon exit. And so I get uh, really crummy cuts. I get unnecessary burn marks on some things and I have wasted a ton of material. I've had to actually refund clients. I've had to turn jobs down. It's just been a mess. If you guys look back, I haven't done a video with a table saw in it for probably a year, I would assume. It's just been a while because that saw just keeps getting worse and worse. Now, if I'm cutting larger pieces on it, it still works just fine. But like I say, those narrow pieces where I need things to be exact, say maybe for a panel glue up or something like that, I'm working on a piece of fine material, it just isn't cutting it. So I had to look for a new saw. Now I started off the journey with looking for a new saw just like anybody else for the most part. I went with the least expensive as possible. I started looking at contractor saws, but as I looked at contractor saws, I realized I was gonna be in the same boat that I was before, possibly in a few years, because there's no way to add on, there's no way to upgrade, there's no way to change things to make it a little bit better. I have to sell the saw, I have to get a new saw, I'm up against the same thing. So the longer I spent looking at contractor saws and hybrids and stuff like that, given the criteria I have to work with, I kind of ended up in the saw stop and Powermatic PM1000 range. And honestly, once you get to that point, when you look at the 30 inch PM1000 versus the 30 inch PCS175, there's only say a three, $400 difference and SawStop has the safety feature. Now, for those that don't know, you could do a quick Google search or YouTube search. Uh, I would look up like SawStop hot dog demo or something and you'll probably find hundreds if not thousands of videos of people running a hot dog into a moving blade on a saw stop and you can see the blade stop and get sucked down into the table and out of harm's way. We're not gonna do that today because, well, I don't want to and I don't wanna pay for the, the new cartridge and possibly a new blade. But like I said, you can get on YouTube, you can look at all that stuff. Um, SawStop has a unique feature, and to my knowledge, it's the only saw manufacturer that has a feature where there is a brake cartridge inside the motor housing here, right behind and underneath the blade. And in the event with that blade running that your skin comes in contact with it, it actually throws the brake up into the blade, stopping it and pulling it down below the surface here so that it 
you're out of harm's way. And it happens in a split second, just a fraction of a second. So it's a very cool feature to have. Since I was already up in the higher end saws anyways, I thought the only logical thing to do is to get that saw stop. Now there's gonna be some argument as there always has been over whether or not a saw stop saw will make you complacent. And I'm sure for some people it will, but not for me. Why? Because the saw stop safety feature does not prevent kickback. It doesn't prevent an ejection. It simply, hopefully saves your finger or your hand, or forearm, or whatever it is that just happens to come in contact with the blade and gives you a, a nice little nick you can cover up with a Band-Aid instead of going to the hospital and removing body parts. So I did end up going with the saw stop. What I wanted to do today is kind of give you an overview of why I built this saw the way that I built it. And I will say one of the biggest selling points for me is one, I can upgrade this saw as I want. So I already upgraded from the base model, which I'll go over here in just a second. Uh, but also I've never heard a negative review on saw stop. And I've looked at reviews on probably every saw that's been manufactured in the last 10 years because I looked at both new and used saws. And two, I've heard how easy they go together, like how good the instructions are. And I can tell you guys from now, first hand experience, it's incredibly easy. This is not a piece of Ikea furniture, we'll put it that way. Everything is marked, numbered, accounted for, labeled, drawn out, like, the, like you have to try to screw up the assembly of a saw stop table saw. Everything went together so easy. You open up the book and it's kind of like the old choose your own adventure books where you get to a certain point it says, wait a minute, do you want to do this? If you want to do this, have these instructions. If you want to do this, go to this page and do these other instructions. Now, in the choose your own adventure books, sometimes you die. I didn't die putting this saw together, almost because of the heat. But this saw with all the add-ons that I have, as far as the router table and stuff like that, it did make things a little more complicated, but still way easier than, than probably 99% of the stuff I've ever had assembly instructions for. So I'm super happy with that. And, and I can honestly say from a first person experience now, saw stops instructions are absolutely meticulously on point. Now, as far as the features that I like about this saw and reasons why I did eventually end up getting a saw stop, the biggest thing is the business end of things. I absolutely love how sturdy and firm this throat plate is. When you push down on it, it doesn't flex. A throat plate that is really flexible can be a real big issue. It actually can lead to the issue that I had with the old saw, which is when you get material in here, especially if you're using like a, a push block where you straddle the blade or something, you end up putting a lot of pressure down on this throat plate. And when it flexes, it will move the wood in and angle it in towards your blade. And that causes messed up cuts. It causes the unnecessary burning and the teeth marks and, and the aggressive cut and, and totally unnecessary things. A nice rigid throat plate or throat insert, however you want to say it. I also like the quick release lever for the blade guard and the riving knife. This makes changing the riving knife and the blade so much easier and faster. My old saw had a very similar setup, but because it was so small, it was a little more cumbersome than this one. This one moves very easily, it doesn't bind up or anything, so I'm super stoked about that. And I also like, and this sounds funny, but the wrenches that come with the saw to change the blade. So many times, I've been changing a blade on a saw and it will have two different size wrenches, and I almost always end up grabbing the wrong wrench with the wrong hand. So if I need to go in and change the blade, and then I gotta go back and I gotta switch and then figure, two wrenches, they're both the same, that you have a closed end and an open end. The open end can only go on the back, the closed end can obviously only go on the front, and so it, it's just completely, it, it doesn't matter. Because they're both the same, it doesn't matter which way you put the wrenches on there. Again, everything seems to be made user-friendly, easy. When things are easy and user-friendly, we tend to do them. I know it's a novel idea, but, most people will just put a combination blade on their table saw and they'll just rock that thing forever. And, and a lot of people get away with that, but there are different blades for different things. I'll kind of touch on that here in a minute. Being able to put a dedicated rip blade on here or a glue line rip or a cross cut or whatever it is that I'm doing, if I'm doing an operation for a long time, I may want to put the proper blade on there and having all this stuff easily accessible, easy to get to, easy to do, will mean I'll actually change those blades, I'll get better results, 
and I'll have less wear and tear on the blade and the saw itself. All right, now this is definitely the splurge end of the table saw, but this is something I've wanted to do for as long as I knew that it was possible to do it. In this end of the table saw, I have my router installed. I have a cast iron top, the inline router table. I not only have the insert, but it's a router lift as well. For those that don't know, a router lift makes it possible for you to do basically everything you need to do to your router, including removing and changing bits, adjusting height, all from on top of the machine. My old setup, I had a portable unit, which worked really well, but I had to dig it out, bring it out here, take the motor completely out, change the bits, put the motor back in, do the gross measurement, and then on top, I could finally do the fine adjustments to it. But having this router lift here means that I can completely wind it up all the way up to the top. I can change the bit and then I can just lower it back down and very accurately get to where I want. What I also like is that with the router insert and lift being as a part of the table saw, I don't always have to have this fence here. I can take this fence off and use it as a regular table for the table saw, of course, but then I could use the rip fence for the table saw as a fence for the router table for many different applications. Just depends on whether or not I need dust collection hooked up and, and whatnot. And there's some other little tasks that, that does make this fence worth having, obviously, but I like the idea that I have options. Now underneath, I also have the dust collection box for right now because I haven't been using the router table. I have some storage in here. Now on the back side of this, you have a four inch and I believe a two and a half or two and a quarter inch hose. Uh, both ports come off and you could wire into the back of the table saw. And if you gated those, you'd be able to have as good a dust collection as I know how to have uh, once you hooked all that up. So that's pretty awesome. And I can't wait to get a dust collector in here and get all this run so that I can actually experience having proper dust collection for once. But this is gonna be really helpful for me. And, and the reason why I've always wanted to put that in a table saw is because I will actually use it. Going back to the whole changing blade situation on the table saw, if it's easy, I'm gonna do it. If it's kind of a pain in the butt and I don't need to do it, I'm probably not going to do it. I'm probably gonna see what else I can get by without. There's been so many times where I just wanted to use the router for one or two simple little things, but it was more work to get the table out, change the bit, do all the nonsense that goes into it. With it being here and on the table saw, which is out and exposed all the time, there's no reason why I can't just run over here, get to business and keep on going. So super happy that I'm gonna be able to do that now. Now when you upgrade from the 30 inch to a 36 or 52 inch cut capacity, you also upgrade the fence as well. And this is a Beesmeyer style fence. It's always been one of my favorite fences. I, I can't exactly explain why. I think it's mainly just because it's so easy, mechanically speaking. It's easy to adjust, it's easy to clean, it's easy, easy to maintenance, and it's just, I like easy. And so on this particular one, they give you two sight glasses, depending on which side of the fence you are cutting on. And all the adjustments are just there. And, and like I say, it's just very user friendly. One of the biggest upgrades to this saw, and I cannot stress this enough, if you guys end up getting a saw stop, or if you already have one, but you have the PCS base, the base that was originally intended for the PCS series, upgrade to the ICS base. SawStop makes industrial cabinet saws that have a bigger footprint, they're bigger machines, bigger motors, bigger tables, more weight. And so the base that they have that's intended for the ICS saws is more heavy duty. The PCS base, the base that was originally intended for these saws, is more like the base on the old contractor saw. It's like two fixed casters and two swivel casters. So instead of being able to spin around, you have to kind of jockey back and forth to get it to go where you want. If you can afford the upgrade, upgrade to the ICS base. SawStop makes a relocation kit for that back bracket to be able to support the backside of this saw. And by doing so, you have a foot lever here. All you do is press on that lever. There's a bottle jack under there. It raises the entire thing up. And when you get to where you want it to go, you just step on the lower level and it releases that valve and lets the pressure out. And what's really nice is it's totally adjustable. So like when I first put this saw together, 
I had it set for basically just this saw. I didn't have the extension and the router and all that other stuff on there. There was more weight to bring it down. So when I step on the lever now, the whole thing slams to the ground if I'm not careful because I just haven't gone and adjusted it yet. So depending on what you have, again, going back to sort of future proofing, if I was to get a 52 inch table, then I could adjust it once again to support that amount of weight so that it doesn't come slamming down, come down nice and soft. So I highly recommend this. It's four swivel casters. You can just spin this thing around in circles, park it anywhere that it'll actually fit, which for me in my shop with the amount of space I have in here is definitely a plus. So I think that wraps up the sort of features in, in why I built this package the way I built it, the things that I looked for, the things that I liked as to what eventually did lead me to getting a saw stop. Some of you are probably wondering why I have this uh, rag on here. I actually destroyed this tabletop surface. So this whole thing is cast iron and I had the first project that I did was a friend of mine come, came over. He needed help cutting down these big birch countertops and we need to just rip one side off. It was hot, I was sweating, and I basically sweat all over the place. I know it's kind of gross, but it's true. So I had palm prints and fingerprints and all kinds of stuff, forearm prints all over the place from leaning on here to adjust something or, or whatever it was. It was the very first time I'd even used the saw after assembly and yeah, I came out a week later and I just had like a leopard print thing going on here. So I actually had to refinish this top, put a new layer of wax on here, and I think I did a better job this time. I'm gonna make another video going over sort of that whole process in a few different ways. I was able to get the rust stains mostly off and then coating it and what I did for that whole process. So I'll make that in a video coming up down the road. But the rag is to keep more sweat and stuff from getting on here and having the same problem happen. Now, moving forward, I, I decided that since I got a decent saw in here that I would help myself out and get some decent blades. So I bought a few blades myself and I've also teamed up with Taylor Toolworks, who some of you guys know I've been working a lot with lately, um, to bring some blades in here. And I have now dedicated rip blades, cross cut blades, combo blades, all this different kinds of blades for different operations. And I thought it'd be a good idea now that I, it's so easy for me to change the blades to actually get some blades in here and see what each one does, see how we like them. Thin curve blades versus full curve blades. And so that'll be another video coming up. We can kind of go through those different things and I can give you guys sort of my recommendations and my thoughts on how I feel about this whole change in blades for each operation thing. Now I'm also gonna have to make new jigs for this saw because none of my old jigs are gonna fit this jig except for one. And that is the tapering jig that I made. When I made it, a lot of you guys asked me, how come you don't use the miter slot like everybody else? I had very specific reasons for that. That tapering jig is made to ride against the fence. That way you have basically infinite amount of width capacity to use that tapering jig in, depending on how far past the saw blade your fence will go, of course. But if you make a jig that uses the miter slot as its reference point, then you're locked into only being able to use this much of it. So luckily, because I did it that way, that jig will still work. However, my crosscut sled, which was sort of garbage anyways, um, and there's a couple other sleds that I have for the table saw that I use quite a bit. Those are all gonna have to be remade. I never made videos on them to begin with, so those are some new uh, ideas coming up as well. And I do have a few other jigs that I've, I have kind of always wanted, but I never made them because I wanted to make a real nice one, and knowing that I wasn't gonna keep the old saw, I figured I'd wait until I got a different saw that I knew was gonna be here in the shop, and then I could make a decent jig with it. And the last thing is a new outfeed table, but I don't wanna do a regular outfeed table. I wanna do an outfeed slash assembly slash woodworking bench table hybrid thing. I wanna see if I can make a traditional workbench, like with a leg vise, maybe a tail vise, with some cabinet storage or at least underneath storage somehow, but also make it into a outfeed table something that's mobile, something that moves just like the table saw moves. I'm thinking the exact uh, width and length of this whole tabletop setup. That way, when I have it, if I have it pushed up here and running width-wise, as 
how the blade sits if I have it going the opposite direction. It would be good for just small off cuts. If I lay a piece of plywood over the whole thing, I'd have a huge work area if I needed to. The plywood would protect, you know, the tabletops and, and the, the saw table, especially from getting stuff on there, say I'm staining or something. But also, if I was to move that table and go lengthwise with it, running, say, uh, parallel with the blade, then I would have enough space that I could run long rips, six, seven, eight, ten feet long rips on this table saw and have something to catch the off cuts as they come off the other side. I'm working on it. That, that's a lot of things to ask out of one project, but I, I am working on it. And hopefully, if I can figure everything out, maybe I can actually make plans and stuff for it uh, to go with it as well for you guys. So that's it for me. If you guys have any questions, if I missed something, I, I went too fast over something, or if you guys had any specific concerns or comments or whatever it is, let me know. And uh, I will do my best to keep an eye out on the comments and uh, answer any questions for you. Also scroll through the comments because there are some people that answer questions for other people as they go as well. Anyways, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching this video as always. We'll see you guys in the next one.